this week's topic on legal hassles and harassment. Have I been harassed for any of my parenting choices as a crunch parent? And I have. I have. I'm pretty new, as you can see, this my first child. We're new to the whole mothering and daughtering thing. Um, but we've gotten a little bit of crap, and it, you know, it's mostly been from doctors, from the people at the hospital. I gave birth at a hospital, unfortunately. Um, and then her pediatrician afterwards, and oh, it's bunny, it's made of, it's made of. So yeah, I gave birth in a hospital. I had plenty of knowledge as to, I had lots of encouragement and information, you know, support for my family, like to say, you know, had a home birth. But for whatever reason, I chose to go to the hospital anyways. Um. For whatever reason, I chose to go to the hospital anyways, even though I had before one. I guess, I'm, you know, I really just, I'm one of those people I guess I have to learn the hard way. <laughs> um, I didn't just, I guess I just didn't truly believe that it would happen to me, you know, but it did. It was an awful hospital experience. I made this video like three times ago, and I've tried to give more detail as to what happened at the hospital, and it makes my video way too long. So when I'm done doing this, I'm going to put up my hospital experience. Um, video up on my page too. My freaking phone totally sucks and won't let me load too big of a file. And I have a lot to say. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, uh, basically, they just, uh, I ended up checking myself out against medical advice because, um, I didn't know, like, apparently when, you know, apparently in the state of Arizona, you're required to stay at least 24 hours. I had no knowledge of that. I was under the understanding that if you gave birth to your baby and you were healthy and you know, the baby was healthy, that you went home that same day. I mean, that's how it was for my mom and uh, for my husband's first, you know, birth. And, yeah, not the case here. And so, whatever. They lied to me. They left me on the birthing table until the morning and then told me, okay, you know, it's fine. Once you get upstairs, you're going to be able to leave, you know. And so, yeah, so I went up there and they totally didn't let me leave. It was, like, ridiculous. They ended up waiting all day. They just fed me a bunch of crap. <coughs> until the end of the day when I finally was just like, you know what, screw you guys. Hey, and so I had used cannabis during my pregnancy, um, um, more towards the later part of my pregnancy to help. It was just really helpful for me, and not a lot, and, you know, I used um, edibles the most, so it didn't help. Uh, but obviously it went to the hospital. Oh, oh, I didn't tell you guys. So I also wasn't totally, like, I was going to get prenatal care you know, um, at a doctor's office here called North Country Health here in Flagstaff, and I went for the first little bit, but, you know, I pretty much knew my body, and was like, following my instincts, I didn't feel like I needed to go, you know, once they started wanting me to come in once a week, it was like, no way, I don't drive, so it's like, I'm not going to take two buses to come there every single week for nothing, like, for you guys to poke at me and, like, tell me I'm fine, you know, so, um, so I didn't go, and she came two weeks early. I was thinking of going to, like, one last visit, maybe, you know, but she came early, and I didn't end up going to that last visit. So apparently that was reason when I was in the hospital to say that I might be on drugs or whatever, you know, and so um, they did a toxicology report, if, you know, say I'm on my blood or whatever, and found the cannabis in my system and then proceeded to submit my case to CPS. And so while I was in the hospital, already upset because I was under the impression I was going to be going home in the morning, didn't go home, and was sitting there, you know, trying to just get adjusted and, like, recover from labor and everything, which I did naturally, by the way. Um, obviously, I didn't get any painkillers, but... So I was trying to recover, and basically, once they told me that, you know, I was just like, I flipped. Like, we wanted to know how this happened. We, you know, were asking doctors and nurses, and I was just like, oh my god, I didn't know what was happening. I was like, are you guys going to take my kid from me? Like, am I going to be able to go home with my baby? Like, what the hell is going on? You know, and so from there, they just, you know, I had so many different people call me on the phone and come into my room and interrupt my process or whatever, just tell me, don't worry, we just called CPS, you're not going to take your kid from me today, they're just going to do an evaluation, blah, 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 blah. It was awful, and it still makes me so mad, like, I wish I hadn't gone to the hospital, like, oh my god. And the way that my birth proceeded, it was, like, totally fine. I didn't need stitches, I didn't need any drugs, 
you know, the doctors, it happened so quick, the doctors barely even were in there to catch my darn kid. I really just wish I hadn't gone, but, so yeah, so, eventually by the end of the day, I don't know, they had been convincing me somehow, like, oh, if you leave early, like, I was like, can I, like, check myself out against medical advice? And they were like, no, then insurance won't cover your bill, and then you're going to make your CPS case worse, and they just, like, totally hung that over my head, like, really hard. And so by around the time that they had shift change, I was just like, dude, I had the paperwork, and I was like, I can refuse, I was looking over it, and we were like, dude, we can refuse these tests that they're saying I have to do tomorrow. And so I was like, I refuse that. So I took it up to the lady, I was like, look, because before I was asking really nice, like asking questions, they just found ways to like, you know, tell me I didn't, they would answer my questions, you know, and make it like obvious that I couldn't leave or whatever, whatever. So I just was like, look, I'm leaving against medical advice. I just refused it. And they're like, oh, but you can't do that. It's like, well, I just did. And if it's not an option, then why is it an option? Like, I didn't, but they're not going to pay for your bill. That's fine. <laughs> you know, it's like, I don't care. I need to go home and bond with my kids. Like, you guys are being outrageous, you know. And so I left, and they were like, oh, well, you have to go to this doctor's appointment first thing in the morning and if you, to get these screenings. And if you don't, we're going to call CPS on you again, and there'll be two file complaints, and you're going to be in a lot of trouble. So, okay, you know, no worries. I would go, I'll go to the doctor. If I had that option, why didn't you guys tell me this morning when... I was wanting to leave. If I could just go to my doctor and get all these screens done in the morning, then, yeah, you know, I'm going to do that. Obviously, I don't want to sit in your freaking hospital and have you guys rack up a bill on me, you know? Like, no thank you. And so, I went into my doctor the next morning, and the first thing that she says, she comes into the room, she doesn't even greet me, she doesn't say hi, she doesn't, I think she just goes, you know you really messed up by checking out of the hospital early, right? It's like, oh, okay, like, if we were in Texas or Tennessee, your child would be taken away from you and you would be in jail. It's like, all right, lady, what do you want me to say? You know what I mean? Like, good thing we're not in Texas. I mean, I don't know. So it was pretty much that kind of speeches. And she was just like, proceeded to go on to say that I made my case really bad for CPS and it looks really bad on me. And, you know, this is a really big problem and I really shouldn't have done that. I mean, you know, and then whatever, she was past it, and we started talking about the baby. And how she looks good, and done her done, and like, they do the test, or whatever, they're going to do the test, and then they say that they want to give her a hepatitis B vaccine. And I said, no, of course. I said, you know, no, I'm, you know, I don't think I want to do that vaccine. And she blew up again, and was telling me about how, um, about how, you know, vaccines, whatever, they're totally safe, and, you know, I was, you know, there was some suspicion that they might be linked to autism, but that's been proved wrong, and they're very, very safe, and they're very, very, you know, important, and I was just like, look, you know, I need to make an educated decision on this, and I don't have enough information to make that decision right now. I might vaccinate in the future, but I'm definitely not going to right now, you know. And so, again, to say that that could also look bad on the CPS case. CPS came to my house, and I was, like, all kind of worried, too. They didn't come for two weeks, you know, because I was very low on the priority list. Like, I'm in Arizona. CPS here deals with real parents that are actually need CPS around, you know, like, people that are actually on drugs, people that are actually abusive, you know. They have real cases to be dealing with. So I was very low on the list of priority, but because of all the crap, the doctors, all the lies, the doctors have fed me, I was, like, so scared, like, so scared for CPS to come, you know, like, and then they came, and they, my case is closed, case closed, first day, obviously I'm fine, I mean, if I get in any more trouble, it'll come up that I had, you know, already had CPS call me once, but that's not going to happen, so, and they didn't even mention anything about me checking out of the hospital, they didn't mention anything about my vaccinations, this doctor lied to me, and all the nurses and the doctors at the hospital straight up lied to me. They were lying to me, trying to scare me. I don't know what the fuck they were trying to do. Pardon my French, but it's it's unbelievable. You know? They lied. And I don't know why they were so bent on... I guess they just couldn't handle, you know, free-thinking people. I mean, I don't know. It's a corrupt system. And so, you know, I'm like six weeks into my, you know, being a mother, and, you know, that's already happened. Um... You know, and so, yeah, and just tiny little note, if you're 
even considering having a home birth, just do it. Like, I don't know why I didn't do it. I really wish that I had just done it at home. Like, if I didn't decide to, I mean, I'm in labor. If I didn't decide to do a whole bunch of crap, call someone, get in the car, drive to the hospital. If I just would have stayed home, my baby would have been born within a matter of hours. I didn't need any, you know, it went, you know, really fast. I would have had a beautiful baby girl in my arms and so much stress would have been avoided. Like, unbelievable amounts of stress would have just not happened, you know, and so many different complications, like, this would not have happened, you know, and, you know, we as women, we can do that, we don't need to go to the hospital, and it's not us, it's not me that was wrong for, you know, for going there, it's the, it's the nature of the system, it is the nature of their system, the medical industry, they're not to be trusted, you know, go to them in absolute emergencies, if you don't have to go to the hospital, don't, you know, don't. So, you know, that's where I've been at. And really, you know, I haven't gotten any car from anyone, including CPS. CPS didn't look down on me. <laughs> you know, it was the hospital and the doctor. It was the medical industry that harassed me happily. Why? Because I'm not blindly going into their system with full trust and letting them do whatever they want and rack up a bill however high they want. So, that's what I got. And I'll talk to you guys next week. Gotta go.